Welcome to Palm Sunday Worship at Christ Church. We're glad that you're here. If you're watching online, glad to have you with us. This will be a special service as we head into Holy Week. Uh, a lot of great worship opportunities coming for you this week, and I hope that you can take advantage of those. Thursday night, Holy Thursday service, we'll have message, music, communion, and then on Friday, we'll have uh, another great service where uh, we remember the sacrifice of our Lord and the love that he showed for us. There'll be a message, there'll be music, there'll be, and by the way, in that service, there'll be uh, strings, uh, string section, wind ensemble, choir ensemble, soloist. Both of those services, Thursday and Friday, start at seven o'clock. So great opportunities to invite others, uh, welcome others. And then on Sunday morning, early next Sunday morning, gotta get up real early next Sunday morning, Seven o'clock, we'll be out here for the Easter sunrise service. For those of you here in the room, that'll be directly behind you, outside that main entrance there. For those of you watching online, that's the entrance that faces East Brainerd Road. Uh, we'll be there at seven o'clock for that service. And then, of course, all of, all of our worship services that morning will celebrate Easter, celebrate the joy of the resurrection. Uh, again, great opportunity to invite others, come and be a part of that. Hopefully you can come in person and be a part of those in person, but if you can't, know that each of those services will be online. They will be live streamed, so let others know about that as well. Two weeks from today, the Sunday following Easter is a great tradition around here. It's called Fun Day Sunday. It's a day where we worship outside, be in that same location I just described for our sunrise service. And at 10 o'clock, Willie Kitchens and friends will share music for about 30 minutes. And then the worship service starts up at 10.30. There will be a um, free picnic lunch after the service. And then that afternoon, there will be games for the children. There will be inflatables. There's a petting zoo. There's pony rides. Again, a great opportunity. This, this time of year is just great opportunities to invite others, uh, families that you know of in your neighborhood, where you work, where you go to school, invite others to come with you. Uh, that day, bring your lawn chair or bring a blanket to sit on the ground, and we just have a great time together. So we um, hope you'll be praying about and thinking about who are those people I can invite that maybe don't have a church home that I want to invite them sometime here in the next few weeks. As always, we invite you to let us know of your participation in this service. If you're here in the room, you can do that at the doorway. And whether you're here in the room or you're watching online, uh, you can go to our church app, and open that up and let us know whenever you're watching. You can let us know that you participated in this time of worship. All right, it's time for Miss Mary Beth to share her message for the day. Let's see what she's got to say. Well, hello and welcome to Children's Moment. I'm Mary Beth Hammett, the Children's Ministry Director at Christ, and I'm so glad that you are here today. So kids, gather around and let's just chat for a minute. I don't know about you, but do you have a favorite toy or game or something that you just love? Well, today I brought one of my most favorite toys, doll. This doll I got when I was one years old. So she's like old, but I have had her all this time and she is a precious possession of mine. And her name is Jane. And she uh, has been remade a couple of times because she fell apart, but I just love her. And it would be really hard for me to give her up. Uh, anything that we have that is precious to us, if we had to give it up, it would be hard, wouldn't it? But not impossible. That's sort of where Jesus found himself. He loved us so much that he had to give his life up, but it was hard for him to choose to do that. Just like it would be hard for us to choose to give up something that's precious to us. This week, as we think about uh, Easter and what Jesus did for us, think about the things that we might could give up to help someone else. That's something that would be honoring to God. So thank you for chatting today, and I'll see you next time. All right, let's stand together and praise God.
worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord.
Yesterday we had an awesome Easter egg hunt. It was one of those times that we get to share our facilities and have games and activities for the community. We had a lot of our kids here, but we had even more children from the community, and it allowed us to show the hospitality that Christ would show. We can do that without charging a nickel because of your offerings and your generosity. There's a number of ways that we give. If you're here in person, you can drop your offering in the boxes in the atrium. You, we can always write and mail or drop off a check or go online through the app or the website and give in those ways. I'd like you to hear our scripture reading now. This comes from Matthew chapter 26. I'll begin reading at verse 36. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you bow with me now in prayer? Gracious God, we are coming now to the end of this journey of preparation that we call Lent. We have given up some things during this time, and as we have done that, we have discovered that those things were not as important as we had earlier thought. Some of us have taken on new things, new ways of serving you during this time and serving other people. We give you thanks for something we called March Missions Madness that gave us new opportunities, wonderful opportunities to serve. We thank you for those who organized and planned that. And we ask that as we come to the end of this season of Lent that we not stop doing the things we've learned to do. You have reminded us during this time that the, all that counts is our faith lived out in love. Sometimes our world seems so crazy and out of control. A war rages in Ukraine. Violence just seems to go on and maybe increase in South Sudan. Tensions are growing between our country and China. And all around our country, it seems like every week, there's another mass shooting. This week it happened in Nashville, and we so pray for the families and friends who lost loved ones there. Help us and help our leaders to turn to you, to seek your will. And then once we have sought your will and we see what the answers are, give us the the strength and the courage to step up and turn what is wrong into something that is right. We have needs among us in our church. We have some who have lost a loved one this week, and we pray especially for their comfort. Others are facing surgery or they're ill, and we would ask for your healing touch. You have given Pastor Nathan a, a message for today. Bless him as he brings it. And help us to hear that, not just with our ears, but with our hearts, that we might live into that message. All these things we pray to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Before I get into the message today, I want to celebrate with you. Back at the beginning of last month, we told you about March Missions Madness. That was going to be our focus for the month. We set a goal of 500 service times that that you would help be a part of, and you got to work. You, you, there was one Saturday that you helped clean up and clean out on this campus. Uh, you made peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for the homeless. Uh, you worked at the food banks. You helped the partnership for families, mustard tree ministry, snack pack ministry, welcome home Chattanooga and the Family Justice Center. You served a lot of different people and their needs, but you didn't stop at 500 times of service. You made it all the way to 819, Christ Church. How about that? That's awesome. My hope and prayer for each of us, even if you didn't in some way participate in that particular thing, my hope and prayer for each of us is that we will continue to make serving the needs of others a way of life because it really is the way of Christ. Amen. 
So on the Christian calendar, this is Palm Sunday. We've already seen the children come through with the palms. We've sung the songs of Hosanna and Hallelujah. We're remembering how Jesus entered Jerusalem a long time ago in that parade-like atmosphere. And many people saw that as, they saw him as the Messiah, and maybe this was the time when he finally was gonna take over as king. And while some celebrated that, others were anxious and concerned about that. And so we now turn our focus, so we have turned our focus to the rest of the week and what happens to Jesus and his followers. As we continue in our own journey toward Easter, our focus today is on this prayer that he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane the night before he was crucified. It's a prayer of complete trust and surrender to God. You might say it is a prayer of letting go and letting God. I invite us to focus on it because I believe he invites each of us who follow him to learn to pray this prayer. There's a reason for that because it's more than just a prayer. Let me put it this way. The prayer that Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane was something was more than just something he prayed there. It was the way he lived his life. It's a good summary of what it means to live the way of Jesus Christ. Lord, not my will, but your will be done. What if each of us prayed that simple line every day? More importantly, what if each of us made that a way of life every day? Lord, not what I want, but what you want. What, what needs to be done, irregardless of the outcome or how it affects me. What you want, what needs to be done, not what I want. What Jesus prayed there had been a guiding principle for him throughout his life. Let me remind you of a few instances in his life where you can see that. For instance, when he was only 12 years old, he and his family made a trip to Jerusalem. They were with a lot of other people, and at one point he got lost. They thought he was with the group, and, and so they had to go back looking for him. And when they found him, they asked him about what happened. And he asked them a question. He said, didn't you know that it was necessary for me to be in my father's house? Even at that young age, he was about doing his father's will. At the beginning of his ministry, he first wrestled with the temptations that, that he would face because he wanted to be prepared to deal with them when they showed up in his life, in his ministry. All of those temptations were about whether he would seek power or maybe that he would use his power for his own benefit. But no, he made it clear from the very beginning it wasn't about what he wanted. It was about what God wanted. In his teaching, he emphasized this. Prime examples in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew's Gospel. At one point, he said not to worry about the necessities of life, but to, quote, seek first the kingdom of God. Well, to seek God's kingdom is to seek God's will. That's made clear in the prayer that he taught his disciples to pray. He included in that prayer two lines that mean the same thing. Here they are. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not my will, but your will be done. And there was the time that Jesus predicted his death in Jerusalem, and Peter rejected that prediction. Now, I'm guessing that it had to be tempting to Jesus to go along with how Peter was looking at it. But Jesus knew that was not God's will, and so he rebuked Peter in very strong language, letting Peter know that even though his intentions were very good, he was speaking as an agent for Satan. Get behind me, Satan, he said. He was going to do God's will 
no matter what. I've shared with some of you before that one of my all-time favorite movies is Bruce Almighty. That's, I didn't look it up. It's probably 15 or 20 years old now. There's a lot of silliness in the movie, yes, but there's a lot of good theology in that movie. Like all of us, TV reporter Bruce Nolan wants to be God because he wants to be in charge. He wants to be able to control life. We all seek that in various ways, in some ways. Well, for him, primarily, he wants to force his girlfriend to love him. Her name itself is good theology. Her name is Grace. <laughs> well, God gives Bruce the opportunity to be God for a while, to try it out. And part of what Bruce is able to do in that is that he gets to know the prayers of everybody, including the prayers of Grace. And so at one point, he thinks he's lost her, and he's trying to figure out how does he get her back. And so he checks his computer for her prayers, and he's transported to her house to hear a prayer she's praying right then. Let's watch. Holy Grace Conley. A woman does pray a lot. Fine. Grace and Bruce. Dear God, please help Bruce find himself, find contentment, find you. Dear God, please help Bruce. He seems to be struggling. Dear God, give Bruce strength. Dear God, bless Bruce. Bruce, Bruce, Bruce. It's her. Sandy, it's her. She's logging on. She's praying right now. So after trying to make things happen like he wanted them to happen, you know, like we all do, Bruce realizes that's not working. And so he prays that prayer, I surrender to your will. And I said, ha, that sounds exactly like what Jesus prayed and is trying to teach us to pray and live. Now, at the end of that scene, you might have thought that those lights shining on him was coming from heaven, but it was actually the headlights of a tractor trailer rig. So the next scene is Bruce in the clouds with God, played, by the way, very well by Morgan Freeman. Bruce asks God what he should do, and God invites him to pray and to pray for what he really wants. And he says, grace, which has a good double meaning, by the way. God asks, you want her back? And Bruce says, no, God's surprised. And Bruce continues, he says, I want her to find somebody who will love her and see her the way she deserves to be seen, the way I see her now through your eyes. And God says, now that's a prayer. And why does he say that's a good prayer? Because it's not a selfish request. He's focused on her and what's best for her. 
not my will, but what you will, not what I want, but what you want. I, I saw Jesus again this week. Well, actually, it was Baal in Beauty and the Beast. Uh, Vicki and I were, well, when I saw her this time, she reminded me of Jesus and what Holy Week's all about. Vicki and I were at East Hamilton High School this week to watch the theater department there share that moving story. Alex Ford, our own Alex Ford, teaches in that department and has a great group of students he's working with this year. They did an excellent job in sharing that story. I was reminded about Jesus when Bill is willing to, in the story, is willing to give her life, to spend the rest of her life trapped there in the castle with the beast in order to free her father who was in the dungeon. In other words, she gave her life to free somebody else. And I whispered, thank you, Jesus, for what you did for all of us. I'm continuing to read this book. I mentioned it a couple weeks ago. Dr. James Howell's written this Lenten devotional book titled Unrevealed Until It's Season. And one of the chapters is titled His Faithful Follower I Would Be. It comes out of an old hymn uh, titled He Leadeth Me. Here's part of what Dr. Howell wrote. With some earnestness, we all want to do God's will. But then we have a hunch a quivering emotion, something appeals to us, and we think this must be God's leading. But is it really God? The holy and awesome God who led Abraham? Is it the God who led Moses into the forge of Pharaoh's anger? who led Elijah to a near-death mountaintop experience while Jezebel was trying to kill him. The God who led uh, Paul into prison. The God who led civil rights protesters into beatings and jail. The God who led Jesus to the cross. How do we discern God's leading? God asks us to do things that are hard, that require courage, sacrifice, and an unflagging zeal no matter what, no matter the cost. God leads us into the troubles of the world, precisely where Jesus walked every day. God leads us into the dark, we reach for God's hand. It feels not so much comforting as firm, maybe a bit dirty or bloody. Jesus' hand stretched out for our salvation. And then he said, it's not about keeping our hands clean. It's about getting them dirty for God in the real world to work for change on God's good earth. Jesus prayed this history-altering prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. But it was more than just a prayer he prayed that night. It was a way he lived his life and a way that he invites you and me and everybody else to learn to live and pray. When John Wesley started the Methodist movement in England some 250 years ago or more, he developed a prayer that expands on this prayer of Jesus. As a way of closing this message time today, I invite you to recite that prayer with me, and I use that word recite very intentionally. So we're just gonna read through it right now. You can decide later whether you want to pray this prayer. Would you join me now? 
Lord, I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Rank me with who you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by you or laid aside for you, exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, O oh glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Would you stand now? As we close, I would invite you to sing along with this song, and I would invite you, if you are here and ready to join the church, to simply come and, and speak to me on the front row. If you're ready to profess your faith in Christ, I would love to help you with that. If you're at home and are ready to talk about those things, give me a text or a call. My number is 402 0621. with me. Almighty God, on this day, so many years ago, Christ rode into Jerusalem. As he came in, we declared him king. And so this week, help us to live into that, and then help us to live each day, this final day of his life on earth, and give you thanks next Sunday for his life risen. In Christ's name, amen. <laughs>